Right, this is a road test video for a Toyota Land Cruiser. Um, this is the 3 litre D4D top of the range one, it's the LC5. Uh, this particular car is registered FV56NZT and mileage at the start of this brief road test is 106,961 miles. As I say in all my videos, I mean, basically the reason we do these videos is basically we're, we're selling to people from all over the near continent and you know all over the UK and we feel it's right if you're gonna come and see one of our cars and make that um, make the effort to come and see us then at least we can do a show you the car in operation prior to coming to us. Uh, worth pointing out that the road test I'm doing it on now is exactly the same or on exactly the same roads as you'll be doing it yourself so it should be very representative of exactly what you should feel when you come and see and uh, drive the car if you wish to proceed. What I try and do in the videos is also just to do it in this kind of same kind of order you'll do yourself. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll start with the engine. Um, worth pointing out that this car has been serviced I think from memory I think it's 12 times so it's got a, it's a absolutely fantastic service history on the vehicle. Um, so you know was I not expecting to find much on the vehicle that should um, needs reporting then I will I'll do my best engine basically starts absolutely on the button um, very 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 smooth running um, idles as I am now just absolutely rock steady just under the thousand I'm about sort of 800 or 900 rpm and it, is, it doesn't fluctuate at all very smooth no strange noises vibrations or anything else coming back through from the engine and um, pulls very very well it's a, it's a great great engine I and mean, obviously it's been designed to have a lot of low down torque you know, it's not it's, it's hardly going to be a screaming engine given the fact it's a diesel um, but what it does is it delivers exactly the right performance in the areas that you really want it to for sort of lugging you know dragging your kids around or towing caravans or whatever else um, but the engine basically it, it starts as I said on the button pulls hard there's no warning lights on the dashboard relating to the engine or anything else for that matter um, engine runs then through to the automatic gearbox you know classic Toyota gearbox you know beautifully beautifully engineered it just uh, uh, it's just fabulous quality of gear change there's no slop in the, the gear change there's no delays and clonks and bangs or anything else um, they really do a fantastic job and it's an incredibly tough unit um, you know, they can take a lot of heavy heavy use pretty much in their stride um, but it's just the quality of the gear change which is just so nice very very slick very oily very mechanical in it, the kind of way it does it and it matches the engine perfectly um, and this particular gearbox said all those changes are exactly what they felt like when the car was new you know within reason um, you know when you put it into drive or neutral or back into uh, or reverse uh, there's no delays there's no clonks there's no bangs that shouldn't be there um, and it all drives absolutely beautifully it's a it's a, it's a wonderful combination and this particular car uh, drives absolutely fantastically um, as I'm driving along now car tracks pretty much bullet straight um, you know, always have a very slight pull to the left as it should do uh, on any road with a little bit of camber but it's, it's exactly where you want it to be steering itself has got no discernible play or wear in it that I can feel um, very nicely weighted steering on these it's, it's light enough to be very easy to maneuver um, but also it has a you know, a, a genuine precision for you know what is a big car, so you, you can place it very, very well, very easily. Um, it's uh, you know, but you know, what's impressive is the fact that just I, I can't feel any wear in it. And when you get to 100,000 miles, you expect quite rightly for it to have a little bit of wear there. But they've clearly the owners have kept right on top of the vehicle. Um, likewise, the suspension of the car, um, beautiful riding cars, very, very comfortable. Um, the LC5 differs from the others in the range, uh, or the majority of them certainly, from having um, air suspension, which gives you this lovely, smooth ride. And again, this rides beautifully. There's no um, clonks or bangs or anything from underneath the car. There's no little rattles where the anti-roll bars are chattering away or 
Um, you know, you might have a sort of rubber bush and suspension component, which you'd reasonably expect on a car that you know, the age mileage it is. But it just glides along with real tautness and tightness, which is fantastic. Down here, just by my well, my left hand, as goes down here, there is a little switch. You can vary the, um, you know, you got from comfort to sport. Sport being a kind of an interesting word. It's, it's hardly sporty, but it just stiffens up the suspension. Um, I don't like the real comfort ones. It's too soft, a bit wallowy. Uh, put it somewhere, you know, on full sport or just under, and it's it's pretty much perfect for road use. Uh, comfort would be very good for off road. Allows the, the wheels to sort of. Uh, move up and down much more easily so it'll sort of go over large bumps and absorb those uh, rather than trying to ride over them in a sport mode uh, setting uh, what's also really nice is on the suspension you've got three options in terms of height normal for just normal day-to-day -day driving where it'll be sort of 99 percent of the time um, but then you've also you can put it down to low so obviously if you've got someone who's struggling to get in and out because it is quite a tall car you can lower the car down by a few inches or so, just makes that a little bit easier to, to accommodate. Um, but also if you're hitching up to something on the back like a caravan or trailer or something like that, um, it means you can sort of lower underneath the ball hitch without having to have the hitch up really ludicrously high. Um, and you can have a the the optimum position for the, the tow bar rather than a compromise. Um, in the high setting, clearly, if you're going off-road and just want to have extra bit of ground clearance, uh, absolutely ideal for that. Uh, it all works absolutely perfectly. All the functions are spot on. You've got a, a diff lock button as well, so if you're in some really tricky situations and the one of the wheels starts to spin, you can just lock the um, lock the differential up, and that will um, give you extra traction should you ever really need it. Um, you know, very easy to engage and disengage, and it all again, it all works absolutely as it should. Uh, just going to try the brakes on the car a second. Just going to make sure it's clear behind. Crikey, yeah. wow, they're strong. They're a really strong brake pedal. Um, pulls that, and there's no, no, I'll do it again. Just literally, there's no pulsing through the brake pedal. There's no uh, vibrations or otherwise, which would suggest that the discs are all in very, very good order underneath. Um, cruise control, just try that a second. Activate it and set. That's working perfectly. Slow it down. And speed it up. And that's working absolutely spot on. Um, inside the car here, it really fantastic condition. I love these lighter interiors. Um, uh, it really does brighten up the interior of the car. The dark ones can look a little bit dark inside. I'm not, you know, but it, you know, it's horses for courses really. Um, but what's really lovely about these, and the vast majority of Land Cruisers that we buy, we generally don't buy, um, you know, ones that have been given kind of agricultural, industrial use, um, because you know, the yes, not mechanically probably be still very good, although they might be a bit more worn. This clearly has just been used for uh, sort of private use and you know just trundling around because the interior is in such lovely condition. Um, so there's no ingrained dirt in the carpets. I mean, it, it, it's, it's not like it was when it was new, but it's it, some of them. A lot of our customers have been to see other stuff, which in theory is a little bit cheaper, but then they find out why, you know. Um, but all the plastics, everything's in really top order. All the switches work absolutely superbly. Um, put the climate control on. Check the air conditioning, and that's absolutely ice cold air coming out of there. Um, LC5, so you've got this lovely big sat nav system, dead easy to use, real old school um, technology, which I, I absolutely love. Um, it just means that all these functions are just dead simple. There's your radio, there's your climate control, um, back to the map. There's no silly buttons to twizzle around and press and go into sub menus and god knows what. Um, absolutely loathe and despise it. I, I actually think it's really unsafe, personally. Um, again radio again real old school stuff dead dead easy to use um, down further than the dashboard you've got power outlet heated seat switches there as well obviously gear lever which you can't see obviously on the video um, and all the switches are in fabulous fabulous order low and high range dead simple easy mechanical changes you know again um, you know in really really top condition coming across the dashboard um, really nice stylish um very typical toyota big 
symmetrical sort of dashboard where you got um, dominating kind of speedo and rev counter um, with obviously fuel and uh, temperature gauge on the right hand side temperature gauge reading just under half which is exactly where it needs to be on one of these cars um, really I said you know why I, the reason I do these road tests yes it clearly is to give you confidence to come and see us but it's also that um, if you know if there is anything on test drive I can pick up on I do pick up on it and I do do that as well um, but you know I can't fault this it's, it drives absolutely beautifully and I've, you know, I've had enough of them to know you know if one's good or otherwise you know you do sometimes you know we've had a couple in on pilot exchange where they have been used for you know sort of builders trucks where pulling on little mini diggers and cement mixers and even Toyota can't you know kind of beat the strain that puts through a car so the car will just feel a little bit loose a bit tired a little bit of driveline shunt where there's bit, bits of wear and you know prop shafts and you know gearbox and everything else but I can't detect anything in this at all um, and it also then sort of you know most people that are looking at these will be either purely looking at these which is quite common um, or they may be kind of entertaining the idea of other cars in their class and notably I suppose that the, the obvious ones would be things like um, sort of Land Rover uh, possibly sort of BMW X5 uh, Mercedes ML VW Touareg whatever they call the things um, I mean the last three I mean they're not really in the same league as this when it comes to kind of a, as, as a usable proper four-wheel drive car um, you know they're, they're, they're kind of softer in their approach and you know horrendously unreliable by comparison to these things that you know, woeful things which we won't touch with a barge pole um, Land Cruiser uh, the, the Land Rover as I say in all my videos is um, is a car that I love you know I, I've got a real soft spot for them um, it's just such a shame that the execution and production and quality is just so utterly appalling and you know it is a real lottery so you could buy one which is beautifully looked after um, but it could be an absolute lemon of a car you know it's, it's such a shame because you know they're like these they're they're proper four-wheel drives they're, they're real you know, these, these, these things are designed to go across you know third world countries and deserts and you know, so are the Land Rovers the MLs, X5s and Taurus, you might as well forget about it, they're, they're, they're rubbish by comparison. Um, but the Land Rover unfortunately said is just plagued by so many issues and it's not just one. If it had, you know, something which was easily remedied and that sorted out, that'd be great, but they don't they suffer with engine, gearbox, electrical, you name it, build quality issues, trim bit issues. Um, you know, which is why, you know, we we reluctantly, unfortunately, sort of kind of given up selling them now because um, they're just they're, they're, it's, it's no fun for us or our customers, clearly. Uh, but the Land Cruiser really has become hugely popular uh, by dint of you know having utter dependability and longevity. Um, but it gives you all the kind of the, the off road capability of the Land Rover. Um, basically that, that, that brings us to the end of this video and I said I hope it's been of some use to you if there's anything I missed out in the video then please don't hesitate do give us a call but based on what I've experienced on this drive the car drives absolutely beautifully